space station itself seems to be going through some pretty significant changes. Mm-hmm. Being downsized, chopped, sliced. <laughs> yes. Dissolved. <You> know, <laughs> Is the base station disappearing? Is uh, what what form is this going to take over the next uh, several years? I think it's Where an interesting question. I think all of us have released some kind of press releases around yeah. the kind of uh, different architectural evolutions we're seeing there. At the end, I think there's still the roots of the physics. So you need to have some kind of a radiation <laughs> in antenna somewhere, <laughs> which you need to have some kind of. But a you beam. might wonder. <laughs> you might wonder. <laughs> you really might wonder need uh, it. There's some kind of a limitation there for sure. Yeah. So this this is, in, in my opinion, for granted in the moment. And yeah. then you can for sure shrink the cells, you can make it smaller, you can put it closer to the customer in order to deliver the maximum bandwidth and getting the best out of the spectrum. You can combine it in an active antenna with putting the kind of uh, kind of RF directly into the different sectors, distributing it on the different beam forming activities. We're also demonstrating this on the booth and rolling it out this year even in, in, in Europe there. So this is certainly what is what's happening first and is for granted. And then you can think about, let's say, the baseband pro- uh, processing, the type of uh, higher layer uh, application, and then you can think, where, where is it going, this type of issue? And I had just had today, with, with, with two of my key customers, a very interesting discussion there around it, different philosophies. Also, the operators yeah. following different mm. philosophies around yeah. it. Yeah. So base station hoteling, uh, clouding. Um, a variety of opinions as to how to exactly. move forward there. Step by step, we're moving into the head nets or heterogeneous network. So it's a big cells and it's a small cells, and yes. some of them are in lampposts, some of them are on towers. Yes. And the flexibility there, that, that's really key so that you can cover all these network deployment scenarios. It depends on your backhaul, it depends on how you want to build Absolutely. your network. Yes. So all, all of the ingredients are really there for moving into head nets. I think, I think it's really, really difficult to predict what's going to happen, how it's going to look like after 10 years. I'll give it a yeah, try. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> no, 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 I won't. We ask you. Because you there are so this? many different, different proposals all going on right now. But the, the only thing we can conclude is that Moore's law is not enough. We yeah. have to deliver mm. more than that. Yeah. So Absolutely. we, have, we yeah, really have to continue to be innovative. Mm. Then, coming back to your first question, yeah. there is definitely no end to the innovativeness. That has to stay and, and continue. I, I look at the features of release 10 and they look mm. like amazing features, but they're going to take a lot of work to get actually deployed out in the field and made working right. I think the innovation will not end. <laughs> <laughs>